Welcome to the fourth video in my Transformer Concepts series. Here we're looking at ratios and taps. So what I've done since the last video is I've wrapped the secondary winding around the outside here. Now, I told you last time that often the primary is on the outside and the secondary inside, but it works either way. Let's turn it on. 120 volt, plus or minus. And what do we get? I've got these leads just on the ends of the secondary. And here we go, 25 and a half volts. Okay. But the problem is I was looking for 24 volts for what I want to do with it. So do I have to take this and undo a couple of turns to get down to 24 volts? Or is there another way? Let's look at this and we'll come back to this guy. Last uh, video, we, we were introduced to this. The number of turns in the primary relative to the number of turns in the secondary should equal, or that ratio is directly proportional to the voltages, primary to secondary. Okay. Here I have a couple of uh, windings up here. Oftentimes when I draw transformers, I'll draw a squiggle here, a squiggle here, and put the ratio in the middle. For this demonstration, I, I, I spelled it out. I said we got 12 turns here and six here. So if I take 12 volts, AC of course, alternating current, and put it across this primary winding, what happens? First thing I'll say is, I like to think of the primary of a transformer as a load. For the distribution system ahead of it, I'm applying a voltage, I'm giving a voltage to this thing, and it's using it like a load. Yeah, it's, it's generating heat. It's generating the magnetic field that mutually induces a voltage into the secondary. The secondary then takes that voltage and it, it's like a source that feeds whatever its systems are, whatever its loads are. And we hear the term separately derived system. So it's a system that is separately derived. It comes from this, but it's not touching. Okay, so here, think of 12 volts hitting some other load. If I had 12 light bulbs in series, apply 12 volts, I would expect an equal voltage drop on each light bulb if they're the same wattage, same spec. And that would be one volt per light bulb. Okay, well, what's an inductor? Well, each turn is kind of like a little inductor. And you put them all together, are they in series? Well, yeah, once you get into this thing, you got to go all the way through it to get out. So it's in series. So each little inductor is in series with the next one, making a big inductor. So if I've got 12 turns here with 12 volts, will the voltage need to be spread evenly across them? Yeah, one volt per turn. And that's going to, well, let's see what it does with the voltages. I got 12 turns here and six turns here. 12 turns in the primary to six turns in the secondary has to equal the 12 volts I'm applying to the primary. So 12 over six has to equal 12 over six. Must be six volts coming out of there. So if I connect my terminal points on either side and I go out here, I'm gonna get six volts across that. You see the beauty in this? 12 volts is one volt per turn. And over here, six turns, six volts, one volt per turn. This is inducing the same volts per turn into the secondary as I have on the primary. And just like I have batteries here, in series, the voltage adds DC, AC, but the principle stands in series, this one volt plus this volt, this volt, this volt, adds up to six volts. Now what happens if I uh, tap into this here, put a lug or a, a, a screw there, tap. If I tap into this winding along the way, how many volts would I have from here to here? Well, one volt, two volts. Bring it along, I would have two volts in there. And actually, whichever two turns I engage would be two volts. And how many would I have from here up to here? Yeah, four volts. So some transformers are like this. 
The secondary gives you options. You can go out on the outsides for the full voltage and it'll have one or more taps within the coil to get various voltages. Now these numbers are only gonna say, you know, exact or close to if this 12 volts is exact or close to. What happens if the system ahead of this has some voltage drop and can only deliver 10 volts here instead of 12? Well, if I take that 10 volts and put it across the entire 12 turn, that 10 volts over 12 turns, am I gonna get one volt per turn? No, I only have 10 volts. So it's gonna be less than one volt per turn. And that's gonna induce less than one volt per turn here, and these numbers will be smaller than they should be. So what could I do if I have a lower voltage coming in? Well, I could take that 10 and still tie it in on the bottom, but instead of taking it all the way to the top, I could tie it in there. Ignore those two turns and just put the 10 volts over 10 turns. Now do I have one volt per turn? Yeah, and I'm gonna induce, mutually induce, one volt per turn into here. So what I've done, instead of going 12 to six, I've gone 10 to six. 10 turns to six turns, 10 volts, six volts. Instead of being 12 to six turns, 12 to six volts, it would be 10 to six, 10 to six. What I'm doing with these taps is I'm adjusting the ratio to make sure that my output is the same. Now you say, Dave, what if you get uh, 14 volts here? Well, I would still tie it in the bottom here, but then it would have to come up to the top. I need a coil here that had some extra turns above it to get 14 volts to spread evenly through this at one volt a turn. And that's what we see in transformers. The primary often has taps in it. So that the main tap would be for the nominal voltage, right? The desired voltage. And we have some two or three taps below it in case the voltage is coming in low, two or three taps above it in case the voltage is coming in high. What we're really doing here is kind of messing with the ratios. We're adjusting the ratios to get the voltage we want. And this is where I say to you, is it, is it one volt per turn? Or here, as we remember uh, last video, winding them up, it was about a quarter volt per turn. What is it? One volt, quarter turn, what's the way to go? I, I don't know, I'm, I'm an electrician. That's for engineers, they get all excited about that. They're calculating how effective is the core here, what's the coupling between primary and secondary, what's, how do they optimize all that stuff? What we as electricians need to know is how this works. And, and engineers also kind of compensate a little different size transformers, the turns may not be exact, but the principle stands the same. And as electricians, we need the appropriate output voltages so we gotta learn how to do this if our voltage is at the nominal voltage, low, or if it were higher, how to adjust it so that all the voltages are correct where they need to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, turn this back on again. Turn that on, 120 volts, plus or minus. And what do we have here right now? Uh, 25.6, okay. So what I did when I wound this up, is it comes from this side and I wound it all the way up here and then down and then added more turns back and forth. And before I brought it out here, I made a couple of points where I could tap into it, just stripped and curled the wire around a little bit. So let's go from one end. Instead of going all the way through them, let's leave these last two turns off before it comes out. I'll skip those last two and tap into this spot. What do we get? Instead of 25 and a half, I'm down to 25. Okay, that's still too high. So let's take off two more turns and tap in over here. What am I at? 24.58. Okay, that's good, I'm getting closer. It, I'm dropping off two turns, so sure enough, that half a volt means that they're uh, a quarter of a volt per turn. Let's drop off two more turns, and there we are. We're pretty close, 24.05. Just a hair over. If I went down here, no, I'd be down too low. So 24.05, that's, that's pretty close. You don't often get it that close. Sure, that's what I would pick. I got my 24 volts going out. But let's say I've got two taps 
One of them is like 23 and three quarters, one is 24 and a quarter. Do I go a little high, do I go a little low? You're not often gonna get it perfect. Well, think about your system. You got wires going out there. Those wires have some resistance. They cause a voltage drop. You start running more and more loads on it. The more amps you're running, the more voltage drop. So, if you can't get it right where you need it, probably better, generally speaking, to go a little higher because you get some voltage drop, bring it down. And most of your equipment is, is designed for a little range of voltage, a little above, a little below. Rarely is it ever perfect. Okay, last thing I wanna do, remember I said if I got two, two uh, windings here, two windings here, I'm gonna get a couple of volts wherever I go. If I undo it here, and I connect it on this bottom one here, and I go up two windings, it's about a quarter volt per turn, am I gonna get a half a volt? Well, the five, oh no, 500 point, it's got a little M there for milli, so 500 milli volts, that's a half a volt. So then I'll add a couple more turns on there, go four turns, and we should be right on the money, 1.0 something uh, volts, one volt for four turns. Add a couple more, should be about a volt and a half, should be about two volts, and go up here, I've got two and a half volts. That's about, uh, what is that, 10 turns or so, and I got two and a half volts. Perfect. So, someone asked me, they said, uh, what happens if I actually touch these wires together? Well, that's kind of like a short circuit in a way. It's generating 25 and a half volts. Before I touch them together, let me take these glasses off. Okay. I'll put these safety ones on, right? Keep my little eyeballs safe. Put on a couple of gloves and uh, see what happens. Touch them together. Oh, a little spark. Hey, you know what? This could be fun. Turn the lights off and see what happens here. Oh, oh, where, where are they? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, they're kind of sticking. I'm doing a little bit of welding. Okay, okay, enough of that. That's, uh, well, I don't know how to turn the lights back on. I can't see. So I'll bring my little candle and say, thanks very much. Next video, we're going to put an amp meter around that and see how many amps flow when it's shorted out. And then what the uh, current ratios are, primary to secondary. Till next time. Thank you.